First off, uh, welcome everybody and thank you for attending um, both to our regular community members of EdgeX as well as those who are dropping by for the first time to hear um, what EdgeX Foundry is all about. Thank you also to Henry Lau of HB, our vertical solutions lead and organizer of this event and to uh, Camilo Dennis and our marketing crew um, inside of EdgeX as well as uh, May Manor and, and Brett Preston of LF for getting the word out uh, to the social media and the marketing channels. As always, great job to our team there, thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce our speakers today, Keith Steele and James Butcher from IOTech. I know both are well known to our community, but for those just tuning in to um, maybe the first of these adopter talks and you're hearing about EdgeX for the first time, or for our listeners who um, are going to be picking up on this video recording later on, Keith Steele is the CEO of IOTech, currently our Outreach Working Group Chair and TSC Chair, and former TSC Chairman and my boss. Uh, EdgeX owes a tremendous amount to Keith. He is, if you will, the George Washington of our project as he was our first uh, TSC chair. Prior to starting IOTech in January of 2017, he was founder of founder and CEO of Prism Tech before he sold the company to AD Link. He is a serial entrepreneur having started and led three other companies as well. Keith lives in Edinburgh, UK. I'll let you ask him if he feels to be more a Scot or an Englishman or both. Uh, James Busher is our product manager of Edge Expert at IOTech Systems and currently our EdgeX TSC uh, test and QA working group chairman as well as TSC member. Uh, you probably don't realize it, but James is responsible uh, by my estimation for probably more than half of the commercial real world implementations of EdgeX, at least that I'm aware of in the world. James has been working um, for Keith for about 14 years and as previously a member of Prism Tech and then AD Link. He lives in Newcastle upon Tyne, where I know you'll find him out and about the countryside with his uh, wife and kids, where I usually hear about him on his holidays and his weekends. Keith and James, the floor is yours. Thanks, Jim. So James, are you handling the... Yeah, I'll run the slides, Keith, if you tell me uh, to jump on and stuff like that. Okay, let's go to the, to the agenda. So today we're gonna give you a brief um, overview of, of what, what we think, what we're seeing in the, in the um, edge uh, software market and in particular how that relates to, to IOTech. Um, clearly important to this particular presentation is how we uh, contribute and leverage EdgeX in our solutions, uh, which are um, becoming quite numerous now and we'll, we'll cover those and give you a little bit of background in, in, in Edge Expert, which is our uh, primary product related to, um, to EdgeX, but, but uh, clearly we have other things uh, coming along now and, uh, and released, including um, a version of uh, the platform, which is uh, ready uh, for time critical uh, Edge applications. And we're also releasing very shortly a product um, to, to deal with Edge management at scale. So we'll cover off those in very small detail. We don't have a lot of time. Um, and then uh, finally, what we'll do is bring uh, Jim back in and we'll give our perspective on where we think, um, where we think EdgeX needs to go over the next few, um, few months and years. So next slide, please. I think we've already covered the pre presenter. Um, I am actually from England. I do live in Scotland. I regard myself as a Brit, okay, first and foremost. So that, just to answer your question there, Jim. Uh, but I live here in Edinburgh where it's very cold and very wet at the moment. Anyway, just a very quick one in terms of the, the market trends that we see and also the, um, you know, where we're putting a little bit of our effort this, this coming year. So, um, uh, so obviously EdgeX is a horizontal product. It covers a number of different uh, verticals or can be used in a number of different verticals um, at the IoT Edge. Um, for the most part, we focused on industrial uh, IoT Edge, um, and we deal across all of these uh, different different uh, verticals with, with our partners. In terms of the trends that we're seeing um, active in the marketplace right now, um, we're seeing that customers really want to have um, more of a solution uh, than the pieces and the parts. And so um, EdgeX, to some extent, takes us so, so far, but clearly, um, you know, in terms of go-to-market, we have to be looking at partnerships with uh, with, with, with a number of different vendors to, to bring those solutions to play. And, and that's kind of how we work as a company. Um, our focus is, is, is on um, uh, putting an open system. So IOTech focuses on open um, systems rather than proprietary systems. So we're trying to bring 
flexibility to the marketplace to enable users to use uh, best of breed uh, applications um, uh, and, and provide the infrastructure that provides that. And EdgeX provided us a great foundation to, to do that. In terms of the trends that we're seeing for this coming year, and actually this, this sort of plays into the focus of where we're putting our, our development efforts for this year, um, we're seeing pretty large increase in adoption of um, AI and ML at the edge and machine learning at the edge. And um, I think it's fair to say that video inferencing and, and use of video is becoming a, a key application at the edge. Um, I hate that term uh, sort of killer app, uh, but, but pretty much every single vertical that we're speaking of is, is, is wanting to use uh, video in conjunction with other data feeds um, to at, at the edge. And so that's a, a fairly big area of investment. Uh, zero touch provisioning and, and so on. Um, uh, automatic sensor device provisioning. That's kind of an area that's definitely moving forward. It's, it's probably going to be a little while before we see that. Uh, but one big area we do see is, is on the whole kind of hybrid cloud um, edge scenario. So uh, even the cloud vendors, as you'll see later on, uh, because a number of them are collaborating with, with IoTech, um, see this whole kind of hybrid cloud edge solution as being something that they uh, they're quite fond of. Um, in, in our experience, the cloud vendors themselves, it's uh, at the OT, they, they, they lack a certain amount of expertise. Obviously, some have more than others. And certainly, we're finding that, um, you know, that, that the cloud vendors now are, are starting to get in touch with us and starting to, to work with us quite closely um, to provide more of the OT things that work really well with their, uh, with their cloud systems. So those are some of the trends that we see. And you'll see that reflected in some of the roadmap elements that we've got going forward. Next slide, please. So just to give you a, a very brief intro to, to IoTech, very high level. So our, our, um, our objective here is to sort of accelerate, if you like, the time to value for solutions uh, at the IoT edge. We see the platform as, as being a, a good way of doing that. Um, we're trying to shield the complexity of, of uh, edge-based systems from our users. And, and, and very important to us in the coming um, uh, you know, year or two is to, is to turn our systems from um, requiring a lot of coding to requiring uh, configuration, okay? So we're looking to, to sort of uh, make life a lot easier for people to, to, to use systems at the edge and to take away the complexity from those systems. So our products, uh, essentially we're providing these application enabling platforms and tools um, which support the rapid um, development, deployment, and management of scale of software applications at the edge. And as I said earlier, we're uh, open and vendor neutral, and we're looking to enable best of breed user choice at cloud, silicon, hardware application, minimize vendor lock-in. Now, just because we're open and vendor neutral doesn't mean to say we don't collaborate with, with a lot of um, vendors who are seeking to optimize things like EdgeX with their hardware or with their cloud. And that's certainly the case as you'll see later on. Um, so obviously EdgeX is a, a horizontal stack, uh, but we see a lot of requirements coming forward now in terms of verticalizations for, of EdgeX in all of these different areas. And we're working with partners to, um, to bring some of these special specializations to marketplace. Our go-to-market strategy is, is completely through um, partners. So um, I've, I've got go-to-market partners at the moment include Dell, Microsoft, Intel, Accenture, HP, Schneider, Electric, A AWS, Google. These are the sort of people we who use our product products and incorporate our products in theirs. Next slide, please. So um, we've been a very, very big supporter of EdgeX. Indeed, um, we were one of the founding members of EdgeX. And um, I would hope, you know, and I think people would appreciate that IoTech has been a huge contributor to, to EdgeX, both from a management standpoint, but also a coding standpoint. I'll come on to that in a second. So um, we think open source uh, is very important, but we, we think open source without an ecosystem is next to useless. The good thing about EdgeX is, and, and Linux Foundation is uh, through LF Edge, is that we've now got a huge uh, ecosystem in place um, that is trying to pursue uh, bringing these products to market. The other thing that we like about EdgeX is that EdgeX is not really a product that you can just take and use. 
It's a place where companies like IoTech and others can come in and add serious value uh, to customers, and um, but yet yeah, you know participate in a project which can provide a lot of um, you know kind of useful things um, to, to the broader marketplace. So we like the fact that you know we're collaborating and producing and developing standard APIs or open APIs so that people can plug and play. Um, we obviously get to access user, uh, a broader development community um, and a pretty large ecosystem of, 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 of companies. Uh, but we also get faster go to market. You know, obviously we're leveraging 100 odd developers who've, who've, uh, who've been working on uh, EdgeX along with our own team. And ultimately, you know, uh, this plus the services that we provide provides a pretty good solution to, to customers at the edge. Um, so you can see from the number of downloads now, I think we're pretty close to something like 8 million container downloads, which has effectively been achieved over the last um, sort of, you know, 18 months since we launched V1 of, of EdgeX. So I think it's pretty impressive performance. Next slide. So I want you to know what we do um, as, a, as an EdgeX contributor. So we definitely did stick our hand up. Our hand up and um, we were we were part of the um, the founding member of, of groups who were part of EdgeX, and um, in fact we've actually led the technical steering group through myself and now Jim since the inception of the committee since uh, 2017. Uh, in terms of our commitments, IoTech team members have made um, over 1,100 commits and half a million lines of code to EdgeX Foundry, and we're second the, now the second largest contributor behind. Uh, behind Intel. Uh, we've played a key role in implementing particular parts of EdgeX. So with our OT expertise, we've, we've, we're the ones that have developed for our SIMs. So you can blame us for the device SDKs and the, um, the overall test and QA processes. Because it was important for us from day one that we essentially um, you know, got to, to have a reliable product that could be used in, in, in deployable systems. Um, so, you know, we've had some pretty good awards in terms of innovation and contribution to Andy and Cloud, and we now uh, are a major contributor to the EdgeX marketing team, including we led, led the recent EdgeX website upgrade. And we currently have, um, you know, four people um, who are on the TSC board. So we know EdgeX, and we know it really, really well. Um, and, and, and so, you know, I would maintain that we're a really good company uh, to take this forward and, and be a, a commercial product in the marketplace. And, be, and let's bear in mind here, you know, most industrial companies will not generally deploy open source. They will either take it and, and potentially build a, an implementation for themselves that they can use in their factories or their, their, their systems, or, or they'll come to a company like IoTech that adds, add, adds value, and that's what we do. Next slide. So I'm going to hand over to, to James Butcher now, who'll talk you through our products, the ones that are based on EdgeX, and also uh, some of the other added value products that we've now uh, brought along. James, over to you. Yeah, hi, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Keith. Yeah, so um, this, this next slide here, um, I think, is a good diagram of, of the, whole, the whole product stack. And the one that I'm going to talk about most is the one highlighted in red in the middle there, EdgeXpert. That's the one that's the commercial implementation of EdgeX Foundry. Um, but we have complementary products. So we've, we've seen, as, and I'll talk about it more, we've seen like a need for a, a time critical edge. So we have a product called EdgeX RT, which can address that. And then we've also seen the need for a, an edge management and orchestration solution. Um, so Edge Builder is our product that addresses that. And, and we've drawn this, this diagram in, in this way because the products are kind of very much uh, complementary to each other. So they're, they're related in terms of the, the hierarchy in, in the stack. So Edge XRT, as I said, the time critical edge. So that's, that's focused on your like PLC devices and, and microcontrollers. Whereas Edge Expert, which is obviously based on Edge X, that's, as you probably know, that's more based on, on, I, on IoT gateways and, and edge servers. And then Edge Builder, you'd probably deploy on a server as well. That could be, it could be uh, on cloud or on premise. So that's the kind of the global layout of the product sets. And as I say, we'll talk more in, in more detail. 
So to focus on, on Edge Expert initially, as I said, this is the commercial and, and value add implementation of Edge Foundry. And we have this, this diagram here, which you probably recognize, or at least you will recognize the style of it, in that we're very closely matching the, the Edge X layout. So we've got you know, three or four horizontal layers. And then at the sides, we've got security and system management. So just to touch on some of these layers now. So at the bottom there in the light green, that's usually what the EdgeX community call device services. So we are calling that our universal real-time device connectivity layer. And as I'll talk in a second, we add a lot of value at this level. Uh, we add um, tooling, uh, we add extra protocol support, and also we add real-time support. And, the, and um, as will become clear, that, that green layer at the bottom there is, we call it universal because it's shared between our products. So EdgeXRT uses that same that same layer. Uh, the core services of EdgeX are, are largely the same. Um, that's the interoperability layer, as, as you know. But then we add a lot of value above that in the application supporting services layers. So extra rules and analytics services, um, extra time series and dashboarding services, uh, computer vision, as Keith said, is a, is a big area for us. And I'll, I'll talk about that more as well. Uh, the app service layers, what we try to do throughout the whole product really is, is to make to make EdgeX and Edge Expert easy to use. So really enhancing the application services to make them you know, just more easy. Um, security, we use uh, Vault and Kong like EdgeX does, but we work closely with our customers and provide advanced configurations of those. And I can cover that in more detail if we need. Um, we also partner with companies like Keith said as well. So RSA obviously, Security experts, we partner with them on their on their threat detection system, and that can be deployed as part of our framework, as part of Edge Expert. And system management as well. As I said, we have a sister product called Edge Builder, but also we develop tools here so that we have management UIs and, and other features that help manage the, the framework. So if I move to talking to a bit more detail about the southbound side of things. So as I said, we, we build uh, on the EdgeX device services layer. So you know the, the, the C and Go SDKs, we, we, we contribute those and we use them quite a lot in our, in our products. Basically we enhance, productize and ruggedize those, those services. So as you probably know in the, in the community, there are, there are four or five services provided as, as standard. So Modbus, BACnet, REST and MQTT, those ones in the top corner. Uh, and even those we, we enhance. So we add you know, extra value features, performance features. We ruggedize those. We add extra testing and robustness, basically make them, make them fit for commercial deployment. And then there's a whole, whole other set of connectors you can see there that aren't available in, 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 in the foundry. So these are, these are unique to IoTech. And we see a lot of our customers, particularly in industry, need connectivity to these things in order to, in order to use EdgeX. So, EtherCAT, Ethernet IP, Siemens PLCs, Profinet, and, and, and these type of services are critical in, 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 uh, in our commercial deployments. Um, I mentioned tooling before, and, and as I said, ease of use is absolutely key to us. Um, so we've, we've developed uh, brand new tooling uh, to, to be able to configure uh, device profiles as part of EdgeX and Edge Expert. Uh, Wizard-based UIs that have just easy to use, you know. Um, and, and I've spoken about this in the past couple of weeks on the TSC, we are making our tooling uh, free for, for, for uh, EdgeX users. So that link there is live, feel free to go ahead and use that. Um, we're gonna provide more, more detail and tutorials and so on in the, in the very short term, but you can go and try that now. Basically it'll let you create profiles for, for those open source connectors as well. So Modbus, BackConnect, REST and MQTT, but also all of those other ones there. Um, and we're looking to develop a, an open source library of, of these profiles, really to really make these, this, these profiles you know, uh, in the public domain. Um, at, the, at the northbound side of things, cloud connectivity is equally important to us. Um, and again, it's all about ease, ease of use. So based on the EdgeX application services, we, we enhance the application services, I should say. So, um, we add extra functions that can basically use those major cloud vendors you see there so that users just need to configure 
their uh, security uh, credentials, for example, or, or what topics they're trying to send data to. So in a couple of minutes, literally, you can get your data flowing to AWS or, or Azure and so on. So it's, again, really easy to use. Uh, we also, uh, we add, uh, we've added Kafka support recently. So Kafka, we're seeing more and more customers request. Uh, you know, like MQTT and REST, it, it can be a protocol to, to export data from EdgeX, but Kafka has a lot of benefits in terms of its scalability and the way it can support high availability and store and forward and things like that. So yeah, a lot of work in the cloud. And again, I'll talk more about that later on. I have a short demo to show you if we have time. Uh, computer vision, as Keith said, vision inference, you know, is, is key and there's major trends in market to, to, for people to move their AI and machine learning out to the edge. So we've got the, the toolkit in place to do this. We've got a, a camera, a camera connectivity service based on the OnVIF standard. So basically a device service um, where you can pass camera feeds around and pass them into streaming services. So we have uh, basically a vision inference service that uses GStreamer as its management plane. And within that service, we have support for OpenVINO to, to actually run the models. So you know, the idea is that the, you, feed, you show uh, a camera feed flows into the, the vision inference engine. And from, from that, you get the data such as, okay, there's three people in the room or it's detected a, a bottle of wine and so on. So that data can then flow into EdgeX where it can be fused with all the other sensor data, you know? So it uh, really adds, adds kind of value and, and, and I think extra accuracy in terms of your, your, uh, your AI. Um, we've got a strong partner network here. So working with, with Intel and other partners to, to really bring this to market. Um, um, and the management system is part of this as well. So being able to deploy uh, this capability to a subset of your nodes is obviously key. So that's where you know, Edge Builder can help again there. Um, so just to summarize Edge Expert, um, we put together this kind of graphic that, that shows some of the value add. And the reason that you know, our customers choose Edge Expert is because of that, you know, it's because of, of this value add, the value add IP that you can't get in the foundry and the full commercial grade support that lets people you know, trust their deployments and, and have basically, they can pick up the phone to us and call us and, and we'll fix any issues and, and so on. So you now the business benefits it comes down to fundamentally is Firstly, faster time to market, simplified development processes, reduced risk, and, and total cost of ownership. Um, so, we've got a, a data sheet that supplements this. So, if, if you want to know more details about how our support for certain things is 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 more advanced than the EdgeX Foundry, then I have a I have a full blown report about that, and I'm happy to share that. Uh, I'm going to move to talking about the time critical edge, um, and as, as we've said at the start of this, this call, that um, you know, we're certainly seeing that customers have a demand to be able to run their edge software right at the thin edge. So you know, the time critical edge, the resource constrained edge. So there isn't anything else on the market, uh, I don't think, uh, that can address these, these type of concerns. So what we've done is design um, an architecture that's similar to EdgeX and EdgeXpert in that it's a a microservices approach, um, but imp implemented wholly in C and in a single address space architecture. So it's extremely lightweight and extremely portable. Uh, you see that diagram there, it's, it's, it's comparable to, to the Edge Expert one, and it has the same kind of stack layout. But as I say, it's all in the same address space. Um, what is nice is that we share the universal uh, real-time layer. So we, you know, we don't reinvent the wheel. Once we have Modbus connectivity, then we have that for both products. So you know, that's really nice and elegant, I think. Um, and there's some statistics there. Um, so the footprint, you, know, you can comfortably run this in less than 100 kilobytes. Uh, the latency is, is well less than 100 microseconds. Obviously, it depends on the processing power of your machine. But generally, we're an order of magnitude lighter and faster than, than EdgeX technology, because you know, that's based on, on Go, typically usually containerized. So Edge XRT is really lightweight. So you can do the predictability, you can do the, the real-time uh, determinism 
and all that 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 type of functionality that, that people require that really thin edge legacy portability as well the ability to because it's written in c to easily port this code base onto onto a like a piece of hardware that's 15 years old for example is also a powerful feature um the other side of the of, of the of the stack is the the management so as i've said um there, there isn't really a, a, a comparable um, software stack that can, that can manage and deploy a set of nodes at scale and based on open source software. So the, so the requirements here are being able to um, manage nodes. So that is, you know, discover them, onboard them, install updates, um, and that sort of thing over the fly, um, um, uh, monitoring of nodes. And then once you've got the nodes obtained and, and being managed, how do you deploy the software to them? So you know, deploying the software, managing that runtime, starting and stopping restarting, again, updates. It's a really uh, complicated set of requirements, I think, at the edge for, for these sort of things. So um, we've, we've basically we've built our own product, so, but based on open source software, which is, which is our policy. So, um, very much driven by customer requirements. So our own customers trying to deploy edgex based technology have sometimes run into issues and there isn't, um, a, as I said, a full blown solution available to do this sort of thing. Um, so some of the key, key facets we've, we've adopted here, we needed to uh, create a solution that was independent of the actual edge product deployed. So it should work on, on edge expert, edgex and edge XRT technology, but also other technology in, in, in the spirit of openness. Um, and architected to support cloud and on-premise uh, solutions, uh, multi-cloud support. No, no. Again, being vendor neutral is one of our one of our key tenets. Containerized and non-containerized as well. And as I said, based on open source software. So we've been working hard on Edge Builder um, for the last year or so, I think, or more, and um, have quite a, an aggressive roadmap. So the first version of the product will be will be available at the end of this quarter with quite a sophisticated feature set already so to do with uh, node provisioning, node monitoring, deploying edge expert certainly is our focus. Uh, we're probably talking about the initial scale of being running at hundreds of nodes. Um, and then in, in, a, in a second release, uh, perhaps another six months down the line, um, adding some more features to do with multi-tenancy, uh, more consolidated UIs so that it's a more, more integrated um, process support for non-containerized apps as well, and improving the scale. So we're looking at around a thousand nodes at that point. And then beyond that, um, more, more orchestration options and, and, and improved scale again. So as I said, um, first version should be Q1 this year. Um, we've got a pretty, pretty good webinar that you can watch that has a lot of details in here, So please follow that link and we can make that available as well. Um, so that's the kind of the technical product description covered, and we can probably take questions at the end. But, but Keith, shall we move to the use cases uh, a little bit? Do you want to cover the first couple, or we can talk them together? Let's, let's, let's do that. So, so thanks. So um, uh, I, I want to take you back to the first slide in terms of just recalling, you know, how um, IoTech goes to market. So we go to market through partners. So sometimes you'll hear about us and sometimes you won't, okay? So this will be an example of, uh, of some of those things. Um, so if we go to the first use case, um, some of you may have seen the, um, the HP presentation um, on HP Engage Edge, um, where they're, they're marketing um, EdgeX as part of their, um, as part of their, uh, their platform solutions, uh, both for smart retail and for other um, application areas going forward. And, um, you know, you, so, so Edge Expert is part of that, that offering. So um, that's an area where you wouldn't necessarily hear about um, IoTech because we're, uh, you know, part of a, a larger bundle of products. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, clearly a, a company like, Edge, uh, like HP, when they sell a system, they want um, a product which is completely supportable. And so uh, hence the, um, you know, the, 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 the requirement to work with us. And we have a number of, uh, of similar agreements with, with other hardware companies who are uh, promoting uh, EdgeX as part of their solution. Next slide, please. 
Um, also, uh, Accenture is a, is a big partner of, of IOTech. Um, so that we're, we're involved with them in a couple of areas uh, as part of their industry uh, 4.0 group, but also part of uh, we're, um, Edge Expert is incorporated within their AI solution, which we'll talk about in a little while. As part of the, um, uh, as one of the industry 4.0 groups, uh, they did a pretty large uh, deployment in Europe around remote monitoring of gas turbines. And I'll, I'll, I'll let, uh, um, if you want, you want to come back in, James? And, and yeah, this, um, this is a really interesting use case, I think. This is, um, yeah, this is the, the, the ability to, or, or the requirement to, to monitor these, these huge gas turbines. They're, 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 they're pumping gas around these underground chambers. And as is always the case, they're supplied by different vendors. They, they speak different protocols. Um, so the challenge here was to, was to basically in, in a cost-effective way, monitor these, these different pieces of equipment. And um, so, so Accenture selected uh, basically EdgeX technology in order to do this. So the capability to monitor you know, different protocols obviously is something that we do really well. Um, being cloud agnostic and, and on-premise as well was important. And you know, very much an agile, modern approach. So flexible microservices obviously works well with that, but you know, so the technology was a good fit um, and an edge expert added more value in terms of having having tools and, and so on as I've talked about but also they just couldn't couldn't deploy open source software without without our guarantees so I think that was another another key factor here Keith. yeah and, and, and you know just to say that this, you know systems integrators are a big part of the the whole go to market story here so um, you know, uh, there are a whole bunch of different types of vendors that we collaborate with and systems integrators are definitely um, still a very important uh, part of that. The next next slide. slide. Yeah. So this is actually the, the other part of, um, of Accenture. This is uh, uh, the, the group that's dealing with the, uh, the AI solutions. So Accenture have developed a, uh, a product called AIP Plus, which I think actually the just about to change the name, the name of it if they haven't already done so. And um, they embed um, Edge X and um, in fact Edge Expert as part of the underlying um, you know, uh, product. In fact, there's uh, a really good presentation uh, that a guy called Alan Houghton did as part of this series uh, where he describes this particular application. And um, that's, that's uh, kind of a, a, on a link here. That, that one is really well worth a listen. So, um, you, you know, so so basically, Accenture have their uh, AI platform, and they incorporate Edge Expert, and and uh, you know are able to leverage our uh, our services associated with that. Did you want to say anything else on that? Um, just to say that we're as, as, as drawn in the box there. They, they basically use Edge Expert as the the data ingestion and, and uh, normalization aspect of the software. So particularly we've been working with those guys in, in a lot of these services enhancing them. So for example, Bluetooth, the uh, BLE service, we've added functions recently to do with uh, automatic discovery and onboarding. And it's another way we add value is uh, like enhancing those, those base services. I'll move to the next one. Um, okay, I think we might sort of just, just very briefly um, dwell on this one, but we're partnering with, uh, with Dell and um, uh, one of the cloud vendors um, in relation to, to shipborne uh, monitoring systems. Uh, and uh, because, you know, that, that's an area where, you know, once a ship gets out to sea, it's incredibly expensive to, to use, uh, you know, use the internet. Uh, so very, very big requirement for a number of edge-based systems across a whole range of different applications on, on the ship, um, you know, including things like engines, for example. So um, obviously got more information on these things. I'm, I'm rushing through these things to some extent yeah. because uh, I wanted to go on and be able to do a, a um, uh, you know, like a, a, a demo. Um, yeah. So we, we mentioned right at the start of this thing about how it's becoming really important um, to have really serious, seriously good integration with, with the cloud. And um, we're working with all three major cloud vendors, AWS, Google, and Microsoft. But I want, um, in particular, um, for, for James to focus on some things we've been doing with, with uh, 
a joint opportunity that we have with, with AWS, and hopefully he can show you a, uh, a bit of a demo. Yeah, that's right. So I, I do have a demo video here that I'll, I'll show in a second. So just to, just to show this, this diagram here kind of represents one of the pilot projects we've been working on. So the ability to connect or collect data from all sorts of different sensors, um, potentially add value and, and add transformations uh, down at the edge, you know, it, uh, that's what our app services it can do really well. And then Fire MQTT stream that up to uh, stream that up to the cloud. And then once it's in the cloud, then obviously um, AWS have got the expertise in, in all the sort of the hot data path, the cold data path, be able to um, apply logic to all that data. So let me just see how this works. I'm going to jump uh, a video in place on my screen here. Uh, so I've got a video that I'm going to kind of uh, talk over, if that's okay. Um, can you see the? You still see the, the screen? Yep. Yep. We yeah. do, James. So, yeah. Good. I'm going to play this, and I'm going to. I'll stop it on occasion, and I'll, I'll commentate on it. <laughs> so, yeah. As I say, this is a this is a video that um, basically shows how our products can work closely together. So this is a. Firstly, on my laptop, I've got a Modbus simulator for, um, for an engine. I've got temperature and power simulated there. And then um, this is a tool here that I touched on earlier, the device configuration tool that is now available for free. So please go ahead and use that. It basically lets you create uh, the device configs in, a, in an easy way. So you can see I've got holding register there that maps to my engine. Um, just pause for a second while I catch up. So, and this tool now I'm showing is, is a snapshot of the management UI. So once you've created your device configs, you then can, can use the, the, this tool in order to onboard the device. So this is, this is the physical information to do with the device. It's like the IP address, the port number, that, that, that sort of stuff. So I'll, I'll play the video again. But you just you fill in the boxes. It's wizard based again. You can do it online like this, or you can do it via scripts. And then once you've got it onboarded, you can then see the data uh, for, our, for our engine. As you can see, it's refreshing in real time, matching the, the Edge device. Um, you can also export from the Edge. So we've got a set of wizards, again, that can export to the different northbound endpoints. This one is for Influx, the time series database I mentioned. So you can set up your credentials. You can do your filtering if you like, or you can just send everything. And here I've got a, a quick uh, screenshot of the dashboard I created in Grafana at the edge. You can do quite nice things with graphs and gauges and so forth. Um, and let me stop it here. Um, we have the export services, but as you know, in EdgeX, we're, um, well, the EdgeX community has migrated towards app services. And we, again, we add value here by providing specific features that make, as I say, things really easy for people to use. So this is a, um, a configuration file for streaming data to, to AWS. All you need to do is populate um, your broker address, your MQT topic, anything to do with security certificates you can drop in place or reference locally. And, and then you just um, deploy that configuration via the app service configurable. And we're, we're looking at adding tooling to make this you know, even more elegant. But you basically just run that up and then data flows to the cloud. And here we are in the AWS cloud with a shadow. You can see that the OPC and, and, and Modbus data from my engine is coming up. <laughs> Let me catch up for myself. Um, so then um, we, can, we can do some special things. Once data is in the cloud, and, and I had a colleague at AWS help me with this, or, or, or in fact, he, he created this integration. Um, you basically can apply whatever rules you like. So you can apply rules to republish the data to different topics if you want to separate that data flow out a bit more. So you can see here we've got different, different topic flows for different data points. Um, and then basically look at all the AWS services there are. You can, you can configure data and send data to any of these services. And the one that we're showing here is to um, AWS Timestream another time series database up in the cloud. So again, you're configuring the kind of the variance of that, the dimensions, anything to do with timestamping. And then you can run 
um, queries over that data and, and you can see the data that's returned. Um, so Grafana also works well with that. It's time series up in the cloud. So you can equally create a Grafana dashboard in the cloud. Um, let me pause a second. Um, and then finally, you can do stuff to do with like the cold data path. So more longer term trend analysis. Um, so AWS has a tool called IoT Analytics. Um, so again, you can configure data flowing into that engine. You specify the exact one flow, you want to flow into it. And then again, you can see that data um, in the cloud. And then there's a tool called uh, QuickSight, which is basically a viewing and dashboarding engine that lets you run you know, graphs and, and, and so on over that, over that data. That's the end of the, the quick video. Um, hopefully you can see like, you know, the integration benefits of, of working at the edge and the cloud. And as Keith says, we're working with, with pretty much more all the cloud vendors to, to be able to really help data flow into their, their cloud systems. Yeah, so, so you know, whilst I guess the, the, the point would be that whilst maintaining the, um, you know, the, um, the, the vendor neutrality with respect to, to edge expert and so on, and EdgeX, then we were really looking at how we provide some useful integrations with, cl uh, with cloud vendors to make sure that uh, people can fully exploit the power of the cloud and the power of the edge. Um, and, um, you know, I'm getting a lot of good indications from the cloud vendors that they want to collaborate with us to, to go down that path. Um, next slide, please. Yep, yeah, that was the demo. So um, just a couple of slides left and then we'll start to take some questions. So just in terms of EdgeX futures, and I will ask Jim if he can come on back on board for this because he's obviously got a, um, a good insight into some of these things. So um, here are our thoughts really on where we wanna see um, EdgeX go. Um, actually, what I will do is, um, is, is Jim, if you could um, you know, maybe come in and, and you, know, you obviously know a lot more about the, the details of this. So maybe you could take us through this particular slide and then I'll come back and summarize. Yeah, sure, Keith. I think um, for those who are part of the EdgeX community, many of these look familiar to you because they're part of our roadmap for the upcoming release or beyond. Um, but for those who may not be familiar, some of the elements that IOTech feels are critical and are going to be part of our uh, roadmap going forward. Obviously, V2 is foremost in the community's mind and also foremost in our mind. And we've got a lot of our team members helping to produce the new uh, V2 API set. For those not aware, EdgeX and its next release, the Ireland release, will be EdgeX 2.0. And so we've got a brand new, uh, more industrial strength API set that really sets us up for going forward. So that'll be a critical item. We're also looking at uh, putting in messaging architecture between device services and application services to provide an alternate path to getting data flowing uh, northbound as it comes off of things. Uh, that's going to be critical uh, to a lot of our needs uh, as we see more and more organizations wanting to connect things via messaging or message bus, if you will. Um, we are also uh, going to be uh, looking at uh, migration tooling. We have a number of customers, as you've heard from James and from Keith. And so therefore, we have to have a pathway to get uh, from V1 to V2 of EdgeX. That's part of the EdgeX strategy as well. But obviously, when you have commercial support, you need to provide those tools. So that will be something that we'll be looking at. How do you take device profiles of old and make them new? How do you take some of the metadata from old and make it new? Uh, all part of what we've got coming up. As we look a little bit longer term, we're looking at Jakarta release, which will be the EdgeX release in the fall timeframe, is expected to be a relatively few new um, additions. It's really more about a bug fix release uh, following our 2.0. And therefore we're hoping, it's not been concluded yet, but we're hoping that'll be an LTS release from a commercial standpoint. That's important to us. We need to be able to go to customers and saying we are based on something that has got some support even from the open source community. Of course, then we have to take that and turn that into a commercial viable long-term support with our yeah. customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then wrapping up, uh, you know, we're looking at metrics with Edge Builder. We need metrics coming out of the services and that'll be uh, something that will be foremost in, in our work. Uh, we're already starting the design on that through the EdgeX community. And then the consideration of deployment concerns. How do you best support not just one instance of EdgeX, but multiple, because that's what customers are going to be doing in a production environment. Thanks, Keith, Jim. James, so, back to you. Yep. Yeah. So, so if I can just uh, summarize 
Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, in summary, we, we've been involved from from um, uh, with with EdgeX from day one, um, and I think it's fair to say that we've we've helped grow EdgeX uh, to be what is really the dominant global open edge platform. I don't think there's any other platform out there uh, that's got this uh, this level of, of of uptake, and I think that's down to everybody as part of the team, and and we're certainly proud of the contribution that we've made. Um, we will definitely continue to contribute and, uh, and innovate and provide some leadership in the, in the EdgeX Foundry um, and LF Edge ecosystem. Uh, we see it as an integral part of our strategy, not only to, to take, but also to give, right? I mean, there's no point uh, being part of these things if you're, if you're just going to take, right? You need to come back and, and, and hopefully make a contribution. And I would certainly encourage uh, companies out there um, you know, we're always keen for, for new companies to come in and help us with, with um, you know, figuring out the best way forward with EdgeX. So please, you know, if you're interested in contributing to EdgeX, come forward with uh, uh, and, and speak to Jim. In terms of uh, IoTech, we have some really exciting new developments coming uh, during this uh, coming year. Um, I think one of the biggest is the, um, the video inferencing support that we're going to be building into EdgeX. But... Um, and I also mentioned uh, major enhancements uh, to our cloud connectivity, including uh, bi-directional uh, data flow. Uh, very significant um, investment in usability. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the big things with middleware often is that, you know, middleware is, you know, can be um, a little bit unusable. So, um, you know, from previous experience of previous companies, um, certainly know that we need to make sure that we've got the tooling to support uh, our customers in the in, in ease of use. Um, I mentioned earlier at the end of Q1, we'll be launching Edge Builder, and 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 we are proactively looking for um, early adopter uh, early adopter companies who are interested in this technology and contributing to to roadmap priorities going forward. And one other commercial thing, um, or a couple of commercial things, we'll soon launch um, our own online store where you'll be able to come in and buy small quantities, and 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 we'll be actually selling things like our connectors, um, even with the open source community that, you, you know, so you better uh, buy kind of um, all of these connectors to link to the open source products if you so wish. Um, XRT, I can't say too much at the moment, but XRT is proving to be a huge success in the marketplace. And we've got some pretty major announcements coming up um, in the next few weeks. So please watch out for those. And finally, just to say, we're really, really, really looking forward to working with you all in 2021. And let's hope that we can do some of that work face-to-face. Uh, -face. I don't know about you, but I'm, uh, I'm just sort of uh, uh, getting desperate to get out there and traveling and, and yes. visiting customers and, and everybody again. So thanks very much, Jim. And thanks for the opportunity to uh, present to the community. Thanks, Keith and James. Appreciate it. Um, time now for your questions. We had a couple of questions come in on chat and q and think I've answered those. We'll go to those, uh, I kind of replay those if, if needed here. But I do see um, Jesus has his hand up. So I want to turn to Jesus and allow you to, uh, to chat here uh, and ask your question, Jesus. Hey, Suze, you are muted. Let me see if I can ask to unmute you here. There we go. Hey, Suze, you there? Again, for those who do have questions, feel free to type them in the chat window or in the QA window. Happy to, to answer those questions. Let me try Hey, Suze, one more time. Hey, Suze, are you there? Still not getting him. Um, we did have a couple of questions come in on the chat and the QA uh, line. Uh, one was uh, with Edge Expert, how do we uh, plan to run ML models at the edge? Uh, again, we, as James uh, spoke to, uh, you know, we'll be integrating with uh, engines like OpenVINO, TensorFlow, and then the models uh, will be generated in something like a cloud or an enterprise system, and then we'll deploy those. We're looking at um, Edge Builder to help kind of deploy those models back down to the inference engine at the edge. So that's that's our strategy going forward on that kind of technology. We also had a question about um, what uh, 
you know, what can you uh, say with regard to EdgeX in comparison to MindSphere and things like MindSphere, MindConnect? Um, MindSphere uh, does have open source elements, so they are both open source, but it's looking at it from an open source perspective of a single system uh, or single organizational uh, system versus uh, a multi open source effort as we find with EdgeX. Uh, plus MindSphere is cloud-based. They, they have elements that run at the edge, whereas EdgeX is really all cloud-based. It's, or, I'm sorry, edge-based. EdgeX is meant to be um, running completely at the edge, but then connect to and export data to the cloud or enterprise where necessary. So kind of different approaches, different strokes for different folks, as they say. And I'm getting uh, uh, somebody who says their mic is not working. Let me see if uh, if you can raise your hand. I can try to unmute you folks if you do have a question. Otherwise, again, just go ahead and feel free to type the question in um, to chat or the QA. By the way, too, folks, for those who um, are kind of new to this adopter series. Uh, the links will come out along with the slide decks and things will come out here a little bit later today about this session. But please, when you when you do check it out, there are a number of these adopter series presentations that have been put on throughout the 2020 timeframe, a great way to learn more about how EdgeX is being used throughout the world. We had a number of organizations, uh, Keith alluded to HP, we've had TIPCO, Accenture, uh, Zhangjing Intelligence, um, uh, Thundersoft, uh, a number of groups have shared you know, what they know and how they're using EdgeX out there. So please uh, avail yourself to that information as well. James, maybe um, one of the things you can also uh, maybe chat about, uh, James, while we're waiting for any other questions to come in. Um, uh, we do have a relationship that we've uh, started with uh, RSA and looking at their product called RISM. Maybe you could talk a little bit about um, EdgeXpert and the connection to RISM. Yeah, sure. So um, that's a good point. So I think I mentioned them uh, earlier on. Um, so RSA have a product called IoT Security Monitor, um, and they've been closely involved with, with, with EdgeX for the last maybe 12 or 18 months. And um, we've been working together on various demonstrators and so on. So we've decided to formalize this. And um, uh, well, the uh, RISM software, so IoT, RSA IoT Security Monitor, RISM for short, um, basically runs as an edge agent that tracks at the edge, it tracks uh, security concerns. So it can monitor things like um, unusual, be um, un un unusual behavior, like um, unusual um, activity in terms of processes it's not familiar with, or um, HTTP requests it's, it's not expecting to, 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 to see. So it has its own machine learning element. I think that runs, uh, in the cloud and at the edge, and basically it monitors behavior over time. So any concerns it raises are flagged up to a dashboard and, and then the operator can kind of uh, okay or, or, uh, or, or basically raise that as an alarm. Um, and our integration is that it's obviously convenient if edge expert can be the, the framework uh, manager, if you like. So it, it, it can deploy RISM as, as one of its services. So it can deploy RISM alongside the, the, alongside the device services and core services and so on. So in one go, you can configure and manage the, the, whole, the whole system. So I think it's, it's really good, really, really good partnership. Um, we've got already, I think, a webinar we've done in the past and um, you can download the software already uh, from, our, from our download pages. You have to go to RSA in order to get a, a key but um, no, it's good. I encourage you to do that. Thanks, James. Any other questions from the community? Okay, I'm not seeing any other raised hands or any other chat or question messages come in. So again, I wanna take uh, uh, the, the opportunity to thank uh, Henry Lau from uh, HP, Camille Dennis from Intel, uh, Brett Preston, May Maynard from uh, uh, LF and helping to organize, get the message out and get uh, the social media all ginned up for our event here today. Very much appreciate it. I uh, wanna thank everybody who has joined as part of our audience. Please, 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 if you haven't had a chance, check out our website, www edgexfoundry.org, edgexfoundry, all one word. A lot of great stuff out there. We've had a website refresh uh, recently. Would love to uh, see more of you come in as both adopters as well as potentially as assistants in helping to put us uh, put edgexfoundry together. We'd love to see you in 
some of our meetings in the future, help us design and build EdgeX. And finally, thanks again to Keith Steele and James for a great presentation. I really appreciate it, guys. With that, I'm going to close yeah. out and thank everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now.